Thank you, Dr. Sperling, Dave, and Aaron. Next, we continue with success secrets. Meg Garen Calvert, President of the Center for Healthcare Economics and Policy and Senior Managing Director of FTI Consulting, will lead a discussion with two leaders who have brought better health to people in neighborhoods of Buffalo with high prevalence of hypertension. The Reverend George Nicholas is Senior Pastor of Lincoln Memorial United Methodist Church, and Maria White is Deputy County Executive in Erie County, New York. The multi-sector collaboration they lead has been successful at reducing health disparities in the community. Meg? Good afternoon. Thank you, John. I'm really excited to be uh, interviewing these uh, two leaders to share their insights. And let me start, Pastor Nicholas, with you directly. Before COVID, under the African American Health Equity Task Force, you had convened and mobilized a faith-based partnership to understand the significant concerns about chronic conditions, including hypertension, their root causes, social determinants of health, and particularly their adverse effects in zip codes where the majority of African Americans in Buffalo reside. And in those early weeks of COVID, with that perspective, you met with county leaders to raise some specific significant concerns. Please set the stage for us and share what were those concerns? What was the ask of the county? Well, thank you, Meg. You know, we had been working on the issues of, of health equity uh, because there are some significant dis, uh, disparities between African-Americans and whites in Erie County. And when COVID-19 hit the region, we knew because we had done our work around diabetes, asthma, hypertension, heart disease, that this uh, pandemic, this virus, was have a potentially have a devastating impact upon the African American community. And we also knew that many of the frontline workers that were in our healthcare system, our hospitals, were people from the African American community that would be vulnerable to the spread of the disease. So we pointed that out to the county leadership and uh, talked about how we can work in collaboration on developing a plan to meet the needs of people in those communities. Great, and then Maria, you were sitting at the table. What did you and the county do that was perhaps unique in terms of responding to these concerns? Well, Meg, the good news is the county had, was already prepared to examine the social determinants of health and in 2019, the county executive released a, a health and human services strategic plan called Live Well Erie with racial equity as a guiding principle and with the social determinants of health and improving them as a goal. So when we heard from Pastor Nicholas and many of the leaders of the African-American Health Disparities Task Force, we were prepared to really take a hard look at the data and examine exactly what the disparities were with regard to COVID-19. And they were alarming, Meg, and we made a commitment to report on that data publicly, to acknowledge that it was a problem, and then to work in collaboration to address it. And I know one of the concerns that came out of that data, which was at a highly disaggregated level, was to really turn around and start to engage in some actions because you had a very, very high, unexpectedly high perhaps rate of African-American mortality infection. Pastor Nicholas, can you share with the audience what it is that, how the partnership, the collaboration was empowered to really act and really move forward given the data that you were seeing? Well, we knew we had to reach out to those who had already been caring for people in the African-American community. So we built a coalition that included uh, Dr. Raul Vasquez, who has you know, one of the largest community health centers in the region and really is, is focused on working in uh, the minority community as, as well as the community health center of Western New York and also Jericho Road. And these folks were the folks that were already working with folks in these communities. And we reached out to the churches our, the, we, the, and we decided that we needed to contact the people in our community and give them one, information about COVID-19, two, to do a wellness check up on them, get them connected to uh, testing, and then discover whether or not they needed 
uh, food or connections to primary care, uh, both physical and mental care. And we literally called people. We, we set up call centers in 15 churches in the, in the city of Buffalo. We hired people uh, from the community. Uh, a lot of them were college students who were at home from college because of the pandemic. We developed a tremendous IT system and we literally called everybody in our community. And those we didn't reach on phone, we were able to contact or work with the National Witness Project, which is a group of community health advocates who literally knocked on people's doors in the midst of a pandemic just to find out how they were doing. And if people had concerns, if they needed uh, uh, transportation to, get to primary care, if they needed to be able to get testing, if they needed food, if they needed mental health services, we were able to do that work through our navigators right there at a one-stop type of thing. And Maria, let me ask you to add, you know, more about this massive phone bank and this initiative and what the following was. I know, and we've provided in the backup materials, an incredible list of partners that you brought in to add capacity, but share your insights from the county perspective well, on Yes, uh, gladly, Meg. Our contribution to the effort um, was twofold. One, I would say to bring in some uh, partners in the healthcare industry. So Kaleida, for example, is the largest provider of healthcare in the Western New York region. And we were able to partner with them to who in the early part of the pandemic really had way more testing capacity than the county health department had. And because of this collaboration, collaboration because of the county's power of influence, we were able to, uh, to get Kaleida to set up testing locations in the African American community at, uh, at places that were recommended by the community. Uh, but the other thing that we brought to the table, Meg, was resources. And by resources, I mean cash. You know, the county made a decision to use coronavirus relief funds to perform this kind of wellness check on our community and on people in our community that were in highly distressed uh, zip codes and, and really in great need. And it was because of those resources that, you know, that Pastor Nicholas was able uh, to empower members of the Health Equities Task Force and the phone bankers that he's talking about to provide food, to provide mental health services, et cetera. And then just to, to bring on another layer to that point, Meg, uh, as the pandemic wore on and we realized we were not just dealing with the impact of the virus, but rather of the dominoes of the virus. We use that same infrastructure to figure out how to support housing when, uh, when people couldn't pay their rent, to figure out how to support childcare when people needed and were expected to go back to work but needed childcare support uh, with virtual learning centers. I mean, that infrastructure became key to solving some of those other social determinants of health that really influence a person's health outcomes. And then when the vaccines came out, we had the, 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 the infrastructure in place to begin to start calling people that we had already had relationships with and to break down that vaccine hesitancy issue and turn it into access to vaccines. And where we were able to just in a 16 hour period, make 1200 appointments for people in our community for a community pop-up vaccine center that, that the county was working on. So the, the relationship is ongoing and that's what's so key. And it, it sounds like the relationship is not just among you and the other trusted organizations and partners, it sounds like you're trusting in a way that it doesn't matter who takes credit. But what I'm hearing also, if I understand correctly, is it's using that trusted relationship to go that extra mile to reach out to the community member, to the resident who is most affected. Is that, uh, I think, the key takeaway as well for how to interpret what you've done? Well, it's, new lead it's leadership. It's it's, it's putting the needs of the people in the center of the work. And the true leaders will build coalitions and will do the things that are necessary 
in order to make sure that the people get the service, they get what they need. And the, so the community is our task force understood those issues. And so when we reached out and invited the county to work called shoulder to shoulder with us, they were a willing and enthusiastic partner because it gave them a clear path on how people can get some help. And that's the key. It's the leadership and keeping the people in need in the center of the conversation. And then all the other logistical and political and whatever issues that may be, those things can, they will work themselves out. You just have to keep the needs of the people in the center of your work. And you know that's why we received the, the results that we did. 33% of the early deaths out of the African-American community, two and a half times more than the population, which was going on nationally. The latest data that we had, what African-Americans make, up, make up 14% of the population in Erie County, and the death fatalities was below that rate, right? And so that's a direct response to this work. Let me give each of you a moment to be forward-looking. Uh, and to share your thinking uh, as to where you can go forward, particularly with regard to the Surgeon General's call for hypertension. Meg, I'll start. I really think that the infrastructure that we built was proven to make a difference on those social determinants of health. And that's not just the case for addressing COVID-19. But as we know, addressing the social determinants of health has a big impact on so many health conditions like heart disease, like diabetes, like obesity. So all of the work that we did really produces an excellent recipe for tackling exactly what the Surgeon General is looking for our community to address now more than ever. As you know, you know, it's very well documented that hypertension is a major, major problem in the African-American community. And that's driven by the social determinants of health. And the only way that we'll be able to successfully address the issues like hypertension and other chronic diseases is by tackling the social determinants of health. And the only way that we can be effective in that is to do it through partnerships. You know, the black community can't do it on its own. The business community can't do it on its own. Government can't do it on its own. Universities can't do it on their own. There has to be a real, uh, a sincere working relationship and working plan to address the social determinants of health. And then I will, will see the same kind of results we saw here in Buffalo with the dropping of those fatality numbers. I'm very confident that we can impact any chronic disease with this same kind of collaborative work. My heart is with you. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you. Thanks.